And now we are in the season of Advent. You hear the expectation happening. Doesn't matter where you go, you're more than likely, more likely than not, to start hearing some Christmas carols. More likely than not, if you turn on your radios or your Spotify playlists or whatever you listen to, you're going to hear. All I want for Christmas is you. But you're probably going to hear a lot of other music. And that's why, you know, this we have a specific grouping of songs that we even sing in church. But these songs, we, we, we connect them. It's Christmas. It's Christmas, right? It's actually Advent. We are waiting for the coming of the Christ. Advent is a season of waiting. When we were kids, or even adults, you wait. You're like... Grandmas are really good at asking for Christmas lists of their grandchildren. And, you know, children, they want everything, but when, we're at, when they're asked for a list, all of a sudden it's crickets. Because there's a season of waiting. If you're a child, you're waiting to open those gifts on Christmas morning. If you're a grandparent, you're waiting for your grandchild to give you that list. I only know this because if you guys know Sophia, she has two grandmothers that have been badgering her for a list, and she's yet to give them one. So the waiting is all of us we are waiting for something. But this season of Advent is us waiting for Christ to return. It's a season of hope. We are hoping for Christ to come. And we have hope and an understanding that we have an assurance that Christ is going to come back because he came. And then there's the wishes that we have. We really, really, I wish that my family will be safe. I wish that we will have a great celebration. I wish that everything will go off without arguments around the table. I wish that everybody will be happy. I wish that people will enjoy their gifts. Advent is a season of waiting, of hoping, and of wishing. These are all things that really hit down the center with this concept of us resting in the hope that we have. As was read, we lit the candle of hope. It was proclaimed that the Christ would come, and the Christ came, and the Christ is coming again, but we have to wait on the fulfillment of that hope. So as we enter into the scripture, let us allow our hearts and our minds to be focused on the hope that we have in our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Heavenly Father, we turn to you right now. We ask for your hope to fill us up right now. Lord, may your hope speak your truth in the midst of the scriptures here. Lord, may your hope open up our eyes to see where you are right now. And Lord, may your hope guide us and lead us that our wishes might be in line with what your spirit is leading us to. Lord, we praise you. We seek your face. 
And we ask that you guide us right now. Lead us as we read your scriptures. For we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to Mark chapter 13, starting in verse 24. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that the summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake, therefore stay awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he comes suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, Stay awake. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I find it funny that this passage ends with the words, Stay awake. Primarily because when I was a child going to church, that was the hardest thing for my dad to do during the sermon. Stay awake. You know, I had to become the person preaching so I wouldn't fall into that same trap. Because it's hard to fall asleep while your mouth is moving. But it is important for us to hear those words, stay awake because it hits the first part of what the core of hope is. Wait. When we are waiting for something, we sit there, and it gets really difficult to keep our eyes open. Because it's easy for us to get distracted when we're reading our scriptures, we, we, we look, and then all of a sudden, you know, our eyes, they get heavy. And then before we know it, we're like, oh, oh what, what? Waiting is at the core of what we are called to do during Advent. We are waiting for Jesus to come. What does waiting mean? Is it just, let's sit here and, you know, something's going to come along. Something's going to come along. Or, as the scripture calls us here, is waiting something that we do to be active. A story I told of my dad when he was sitting in, in the pews 
falling asleep during, during the sermon. It's because he's not actively engaging, right? It's easier for us to fall asleep when we, aren't, when we disengage, when we let go. We're like, but to truly wait means that we are focused, that we are looking and doing the things that God has told us to do. God gave us something to do while we wait. Waiting is actively engaging with what God is already doing here. Waiting is about sharing that hope with everyone that we come in contact with. Waiting is about sharing. Waiting is about giving. Waiting is about engaging with God's mission in our world. So we can't just sit back because if we just sit back and look, you know, something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. Our eyes will slowly close <coughs> and we will disengage what God has called us to do. But no, waiting means that we are active. We're active in spreading the word of hope. Advent is about hope. This Sunday, we focus on hope. So as we wait, we share the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. The hope that we can only have in Christ Jesus. The problem is, we like to exchange that hope that we have for Jesus with hope that we have in somebody else. Whether it be a friend, a boss, a parent, we cannot exchange the hope that we have in Christ Jesus for any other person. Because people, they let us down. Even we let ourselves down. We can't even exchange the hope that we have for Jesus for hope in ourselves. Because inevitably, we all will let each other down. We've all done something where we haven't let our yes be our yes and our no be our no. But when Jesus says he's going to do something, when God says he's going to do something, he's going to follow through. It may not look like we thought it was going to look like. But that's because we've exchanged the hope in what God says for the hope that we have in our mind. The hope that we have in God is unlike any hope that we could ever see in our world. Everyone lets us down except God. So in this season, as we hope let us focus on what God has called each and every one of us to do. Because when God tells us to do something, it might be a good idea for us to do it. Because God knows what is in store. When we carry out God's word, God knows what is going to happen to us and for us. God's hope is not fleeting. And therefore, we need to be the people that allow his hope not just to sit and dwell in our hearts, but we share it. And we carry it out to the world. And we remind the world that, you know, you know, we look at this season and we look at just a smattering of the movies. This is one of those seasons that there are so many movies out there that are either classics or that they get that status after only a few short years. But you look at each and every one of them, 
There's someone or something that lets them down during this season. The classic, when I was a kid, we watched Home Alone. Where as a child, his parents miscounted their kids. They were able to board a plane to Paris. As a parent, I can't even imagine this, but obviously it's a movie. But we look, they were able to board a plane to Paris without a child. And at first he was really excited because they had had a fight before and it was like, oh, it, but then it got to be. Mom and Dad let me down. They let me down. Or we look at the National Lampoon's Christmas, uh, Christmas vacation. He's waiting on a Christmas bonus. He's going to build this pool, and oh, yes! Finds out that the Christmas bonus is, as his cousin said, of the, the gift that keeps on giving, a jam of the month club. I don't know about you guys, but it's hard to build a pool with a jam of the month club. His boss led him down. Christmas Inevitably, the way that the world works on Christmas, it's going to let us down. But Jesus doesn't. Yeah, those movies, they have resolutions that come to this, oh, it worked out. But only after some hijinks that are really unbelievable, right? Jesus doesn't need hijinks but he does dwell in the unbelievable. It was hard for the people to believe that the savior of the world would come in the form of a small baby. It was hard for the people to believe that the virgin would give birth to that child. It was hard for the people to believe because it looked different. But God dwells in the unbelievable. Which comes to the last part. There are wishes. What do we have on our wish list? I remember getting the, the Christmas wish list was the Sears. Christmas book, the big book that had all the to every single toy that you could imagine when I was a kid. And we'd go and we'd circle what we wanted. Oh, I want this, oh, I want that, I want that, I want that. Our wish list was way too long and we definitely weren't going to get everything that we wished for. And sometimes, as followers of God, we have things on our wish list. We have things, oh, I wish for this church to be packed to the gills. I wish for this church to have a thriving singles ministry or children's ministry or youth ministry. We wish for all of these things to happen. And it's okay for us to have those wishes. And I think that God, through our prayers, invites us to use this season of hope to put those wishes out there. Say, God, I wish for this to happen. But we have to understand that there is a difference between our wishes and our hope. We may not get all of our wishes. In fact, just like when I was a kid and I had the whole book and I circled about 150 different things, I got 1%. God wants us to put our wishes out there. This time of hope is about putting our wishes out there. But we can't get confused with our wishes and our hope. 
Because when our wishes don't come true, the temptation is to lose our hope. But that's not what the scriptures are inviting us to see. The scripture is definitive. Christ is coming back. Amen. Christ is coming back, and that is where we put our hope. We don't put our hope in numbers. We don't put our hope in money. We don't put our hope in jobs. We don't put our hope in anything except for God embodied in Christ Jesus. Because God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, is going to do a mighty work in us. Whether we see it now or not, God is going to do a mighty work in us. But while we wait, let us do his work right now. Let us step out. Let us use this season to share God's hope. Let us pray our prayers asking God, I want this to happen. Because we know that God is our hope. No matter, no matter what side of this you come from, whether it's the waiting side or the wishing side, it all points back to hope. And God is calling us to be a church grounded and founded in his hope that he is coming again. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we look to you right now. We ask for you to guide us. We ask for you to lead us. We ask for you to show us your hope. And that as we send our wishes to you, as we wait for you to answer, we rest right there in the middle of your hope. Lord, let us not too quickly forget that hope is where we start this season. Lord, we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.